Okay, this is the second in a series of videos that we're producing to showcase some of the new functionality in Project Explorer 6. Uh, we've already done one video which shows the basics of how AutoCAD tables can be created dynamically using Project Explorer. And in this video we're going to go into more detail and do effectively a deep dive on how this functionality operates and what you can do with it. So I'd recommend that you view the other video first and the link is coming up on the screen now. And having watched that one, you'd be probably interested in finding out a little bit more information about how this works. Now the purpose of this video is to show you how to create this table that's shown on screen at the moment. So this is an alignment table. The alignment is called First Street. And I want to show a series of columns, Easting, Northing, Chainage or Station, Bearing, um, Alignment Radius and the horizontal code for each tangent point in the alignment. And we're going to create this in a way that it's dynamically related back to the alignment, even though what's created here is a standard AutoCAD table. Okay, so let's just erase this table and start from scratch. Um, here is the drawing I'm using. So this is one of the standard uh, sample drawings that ships with Civil 3D. And I'm going to open the Project Explorer window. And from here you can see that we have two alignments in this drawing. The first one is called First Street, which I'm highlighting in the viewport now. Um, and the second one is called Second Street, which is now being highlighted in the viewport. So to start creating dynamic tables in Project Explorer, the first thing we need to do is to set up an object set. Now an object set is a list of objects with an action associated with it. The object set has a name and description and then the action is set here and in this case our action is going to be to create an AutoCAD table in model space which opens up the parameters for the table on this side of the panel and all I need to do at this point is to pick the insertion point in the drawing which I'll pick over here I can decide how the uh, table should be updated either manually by pressing the run actions button or dynamically, which means that every time a design change is encountered in Civil 3D which affects the objects within the object set, then the action will be updated for you automatically without you having to interact um, with the table or with Project Explorer in any way. So we have a table being created at this insertion point and the updates will be triggered dynamically. The final two options are the layout style and the table style. So the layout style will control the number of columns, the way they're titled, the visibility of each column of data and so on. I'll come back to that in a moment. The second style is the table style. So this controls the font settings and the line color and cell padding options. And we'll come back to that in a moment as well. We'll just use the defaults for the time being. So let's click OK and then we're ready to start nominating the objects which should appear in the table. And in this case I'm just going to select the first alignment in our model which is called First Street. So you'll now see a table created on screen and if I zoom in a little bit further you'll see that we actually have two tables and at this point we've just accepted the standard list of columns within the table. Now the list of columns that you see here mirrors what we see in the Project Explorer panel. So if I go back to the Alignments tab, you can see that we have Point Index, Station, Easting, Northing, Elevation and so on. And it's the same as what you'll see in the viewport over here. Point Index, Station, Easting, Northing, Elevation and all the other columns of information that we're sh currently showing in the Project Explorer panel. The reason that this is our currently selected layout of columns within the table is because when we set up the object set we chose to use the layout of the Project Explorer window to form the content of our table. So what I would like to do is to put some specific columns of information into our alignment stations uh, table. So I'm going to turn off all of these options here and just pick the ones that I'm interested in which is point index, station, easting, northing, bearing, alignment radius, and alignment point code. And I just want to change the label of these columns before I go any further. So let's change this to point. Station will be renamed to chainage and it will come after the easting and northing. And I'm just going to set these titles into capitals.
and save this to a layout style which I can use again for other similar requirements in my drawings. So if I click OK now you'll see that the table is updated to the layout of columns that I wanted within my model. So at the moment you can see that we have more rows of information within our table than we probably expected. That's because we're currently showing a chainage interval of 10 meters uh, between the points. So I can just run a modification to my layout style to restrict the number of points that we include within our table. So I go back into the object set, I call up the layout style, and down here you can see that we're using a line interval, curve interval and spiral interval. I just need to turn those points off to exclude them from my table. So let's click OK, save the style, and you can see that my table is now updated to represent the information that I probably would be more likely to want to see in my table. So the last thing I need to do is just to update the codes which are shown within this last column. I just want to show PC, PT, PC and so on. So let's go back into this object set styles and actually I created another style earlier on which includes those options. And if I select that you can see that I've now got the table showing in exactly the way that I wanted. Now the last thing I want to do is to control the visibility of these two tables. You can see at the moment that we have a table for the alignment properties and we have a table for the alignment station or chainage properties. Now this is controlled by these two parameters here. We have an object table for the alignment properties and we have a sub-object table for the alignment station or chainage properties. And if I double click this item here I can suppress the object table and just leave the sub-object table. And if I click OK, that first table will be removed. Um, and just to also reiterate that the title cell here is being created from the alignment name. We can see that we have an object name variable in here and we have a, a list of objects that we can use here. For example, I could put the drawing name into the title of the table. But in this case, we would like to leave this set to the alignment name. Now if I list this item here you can see that it is indeed an AutoCAD table. Okay, It has a table style associated with it. That AutoCAD table has been created automatically by Project Explorer. And because it's an AutoCAD table I have a whole series of AutoCAD table editing um, abilities with this. So for example I can use the resize column option to get standard size columns here and I even have the ability to export this to a, a CSV file. Okay, so there's nothing more to this than it just being a standard AutoCAD table. Um, but despite the fact that it's an AutoCAD table, any edits to this alignment will cause the table to be updated. So if I, if I use the Project Explorer option to change the alignment name, you'll see that that table is updated to reflect that change. And equally if I split the viewport here into two parts and scroll down to my alignment here and select it in the AutoCAD viewport you'll see that any changes that I make to my alignment and I'm just making some very very crude changes here just to, for simplicity you can see that those alignment changes are reflected in the table as I make edits to the alignment. Okay, so the alignment table is directly related back to the alignment itself. Now if I wanted to show additional alignment tables in my drawing, all I need to do is to add another alignment to the object set. So let's go back to this table, just zoom out slightly and go back to my object set tab and you can see here that as well as having first road listed in the object set I can add a second alignment to the object set and that will cause the second alignment to be listed in exactly the same way and if I just suppress the object table you can see that we now have two tables set up as a direct result of using this object set and again in case you wondered if I just zoom into this second table and 
select the alignment in the viewport and make a quick change to this alignment, you can see that that table is also reacting to any ch changes I make in the model. Now you may not like the table style that's being used here. So another thing that we can do with Project Explorer is to use the function in the object set settings to change the table style. So this is a Project Explorer table style definition which generates an AutoCAD table style when the table is created. So within here we have control over things like the background colors which I can turn off. I can set the border color to something different like blue. I can change the font to something slightly different. Perhaps change the text height to something larger for the title row, the header row and the data rows. And I can change the cell margins to something else as well. Now if I save this table style and then just click OK you can see that that then is updated in my model and we're now using an alternative table style to generate our tables. So because the whole thing is style driven it means that once you've generated this library of layout styles and table styles it's very easy to recreate these settings in other drawings. Now what about if you wanted to export this information to a PDF file or Excel file as well? What we can do here is we can just simply duplicate the object set that we've created. So we now have a second object set and I'm going to use this object set to generate a PDF version of the report. So all I do is change the object set action to generate a PDF file. Click OK and if I run the selected action you can see that we have a PDF file being created which uses the same table layout as what we have up here. Now let's say we wanted to also send this information to an Excel file. So again let's change this to XLS just so that we can easily identify what this object set does. And in this case we set the action type to generate an Excel file. And I could use a different report style but in this case I'll just leave it the same. And if I run this action you can see that this one will generate an Excel spreadsheet containing the same information. Okay, so there we have the same table information. Let's just set the uh, column width just so that that's easier to see. So again if I change the window of this you can see that the information going to Excel is formatted in exactly the same way as the information that's going to this table in AutoCAD. And there is Second Street. So the beauty of using this method in Project Explorer is that at any time we can apply a design change to the alignment in Civil 3D and you will see the tables changing in AutoCAD but also re when you rerun all of these actions you can see that the Excel file as well is always going to be in sync with the information stored within Civil 3D. So you then might be wondering what happens if a user was to accidentally delete the AutoCAD tables. Now the great thing here is that because the object set definition still exists within Project Explorer, all we need to do to recreate those tables is just to run that action again. But equally if the Project Explorer window was closed when these objects were erased, then because the object set action type was set up to be dynamic, it means that when we reopen the Project Explorer window, Project Explorer will identify that those tables need to be either recreated or updated. Now one word of caution here is just to point out that the dynamic relationship between the alignments and the tables is only active when the Project Explorer window is open. So if we close the Project Explorer window and then make an edit to one of these alignments, you'll see that the table does not get updated at this point. And this is a decision we took in the design of Project Explorer to make sure that there is no overhead to the performance of Civil 3D when the Project Explorer window is not open. But it's really nothing to worry about because if you're working in this situation where the Project Explorer window is closed and you've made changes to your alignment, all you need to do to cause those tables to be updated is simply to reopen the Project Explorer window again. 
and then it recognizes that some changes have been made and the tables are updated accordingly. So equally, you might get to the point in your design where you no longer wish these tables to be dynamically related back to the alignments. And in that case, you might want to break the connection between the alignment and the AutoCAD tables that have been created by Project Explorer. And this is a very easy thing to do as well. What we need to do in this case is simply delete the object set from Project Explorer. And when we do this, you'll notice that Project Explorer has detected that one or more tables are associated with this object set. And we now get the option to either delete the tables from the drawing or leave them in place. So if I answer no to this question, you'll find that the tables are left within the drawing, but you'll also find that any changes to the alignments will not cause any updates to those tables. So there's one more thing I'd like to show you about the table creation process in Project Explorer. And what I've done now is reopened the drawing and I've cleared my object sets. So I'm going to create a new object set. I'm going to select the AutoCAD table in model space option, select dynamic, pick the insertion point, and then click OK. And in this case, what I'd like to do is just to put the object tables in for a few objects. So I'm going to pick one of the alignments, and I'm going to pick one of the parcels. I'll then turn off the sub-object table for both. So, if I zoom into this area, you can see that we now have a, an alignment table, and we have a parcel table. Now, if I wanted to add a second parcel to this list of tables, you might wish to think that rather than create a third table, that it would merge the next parcel into the parcel that already exists here. So let's show you what will happen if I add a second parcel to this object set. I'm going to add easement 13. You can see now that it's recognized that there are two objects in a row that are using an object table and therefore it makes sense to merge them into one table. So it doesn't matter how many times we do this, if we add another five parcels and turn off the sub-object table for all of them, you can see that all of those are combined into a single object table. And just to show how clever this is, if I was to change the order of the objects within this object set and move the alignment down one, you can see that it will adjust the way those tables are combined based on where it finds consecutive sets of similar types of object. And that's all. Thank you for watching.